What is up and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna be unboxing an order that I just got in from LC Fingerboards. For the longest time, a lot of people have been asking me my opinion of LC boards. And since I've never tried them before, I'm excited to get this open and try it out and give my opinion of this board. I also ended up ordering some finger shoes and as well as the complete setup and then also an extra pair of red bearing wheels. These are for another project, but I wanted to get these. These were just inexpensive bearing wheels for five bucks, plastic wheels. Then this is the main thing that I wanted to order from LC Boards. It's a complete setup, 34 millimeter popsicle board. I ended up going with the Mazda RX-7 graphic on a five ply wooden deck. And right away looking at this board and the shape of it, it's almost the same, if not identical to Teak Tuning's 34 millimeter popsicle boards. It's a little bit lighter weight of a board and it has medium high kicks as well as medium concave. The sheet of foam grip tape that is included is a little bit on the thicker side. It's probably a medium thickness. I personally prefer a little bit thinner just because it gives a little bit better board feel, but this stuff works pretty well and it also lasts a little bit longer. I like to put the grip tape on starting on one side and working my way to the other. This helps avoid any of the tape from peeling in the pockets. With the grip tape on, all that's left to do is remove the excess and I'm just using a hobby blade with the grip part of it and the blade taken out. And it seems to work really well, especially in the pockets. It's able to get in all the little corners. If you don't have a hobby blade like this, you can use pretty much any nail file or round file that works pretty well. And I've even heard of people using scissors or the backs of scissors, not even the sharp side of it. But as long as you go in a downwards direction, just like this, it should work pretty well. But let me know in the comments if you've ever used anything else other than a file to grip a board or what you like to use and what works best. This foam grip tape filed down pretty easy compared to other foam grip tape that I've used in the past and was also super easy to remove the excess. And it didn't leave behind that thin layer of kind of like sticky backing that some of the other foam grip tape has. And I like to come back one more time with the file and just hit up any areas that didn't get shaped down. And then using a clear piece of tape going around the edges, this helps get off any of the excess sticky glue as well as any foam grip tape that's left behind. And just feeling it, it has a good amount of grippiness to it. Using the multi-tool included, I'm using the screwdriver end and I'm just poking it in the holes for the screws for where the trucks get installed. And I like to come back with a regular or a little bit bigger Phillips screwdriver head and just ream out the holes a little bit bigger so it kind of makes them a little bit cleaner. The trucks that come included with this setup are pretty much the same generic kind of standard basic truck that you get with any inexpensive or like $20 to $30 range complete fingerboard. And it's important to use the screws that are included with these just because they are a self-tapping screw, meaning the truck bases themselves are not actually threaded. So using these, it does make it a little bit easier just because you don't have to worry about stripping them. However, you do have to use a good amount of pressure Using the tool that's included, I always find that these trucks are really hard to install the screws, especially the first time just getting the screws kind of tapped. And then once they get going, it seems like they go in a little ways and then they always kind of just stop. And I find that going back and forth a little bit does help, but overall using the small screwdriver that is included definitely is not ideal. I found that it is worth picking up a precision screwdriver or an eyeglass repair kit just for a little bit bigger screwdriver that gives a little bit more leverage and makes it a lot easier for getting the screws in. And I actually got this screwdriver with my Obvious fingerboard deck, but you can get a nice precision screwdriver just for a few dollars and it makes the job of getting these trucks installed a lot easier. Since these are a self-tapping screw, it's important to use just the screws that were included and not use screws from another setup or a tech deck just because the threads are a little bit different and it can cause the base plates to strip out. I did like that these screws are a little bit on the longer side and make sure that they have enough threading to go through that you don't have to worry about the threads coming unthreaded or stripped. One other trick that I have found that also helps getting the screws in and installed is installing one screw in one corner and getting it mostly tightened in and then installing the screw in the other kind of diagonal hole. Once the first two are in, and for the most part tight, it makes it really easy to get the last two in. And then once all four screws are in, I come back and just make sure that all the screws are tight. With all the screws in and the trucks nice and flush on the board, the white trucks on the white deck looks really clean. 
All that's left to do is install the wheels. And I like that this setup comes with lock nuts. So they actually have a nylon ring that makes it so these locking nuts do not come off when using the board. And the bearings actually spin for a decent amount of time. Since the truck axles as well as the lock nuts are machine threaded, it's important to either hand thread the lock nut to get it started and make sure that it's not cross threading. But once it's started, it should go on pretty easily. And if it is kind of hard, it's a good idea to kind of back it off just to not strip out the threading on these. And another trick that I found is kind of preloading the nut into the wheel and then picking up the whole wheel and nut just like this all in one piece and then starting the threading with the tool and you can kind of do it just by making sure that it starts and it goes on pretty easily. All of the lock nuts went on nice and easily for me. And it is important, especially with these budget trucks, to be a little bit more careful when installing the trucks and not over tighten them, just because they are also a single axle. And if you over tighten one side, it can knock the axle out of place and it'll make it so it's loose on both sides and you won't be able to get the wheels off. Just from my initial testing out of doing a few tricks, I can already tell that this board is very similar to a T tuning setup. And it is on the lighter side, has a lot of pop to the board. It's not gonna be as consistent as some of the heavier boards, but it is gonna be a little bit easier to get a little bit higher pop. And especially for more beginners, this is actually a really good thing. It can help kind of do flick tricks. And while simple flip tricks are a little bit easier, I did find more technical tricks to be a little bit more challenging to be consistent with. And because the board is lighter, it also, if you use it outside, is really affected by the slightest amount of wind compared to a heavier setup that's not as affected. The bushings included with these trucks are the O-ring or donut style bushings with the washers on top and bottom. And while they are soft and squishy, they're not as responsive and they don't tend to pop up as much as the bubble bushings from Teak Tuning or that style of bushing. And then the only other problem with these trucks that I've found is that the kingpin is a standard kingpin and it kind of sticks up above the trucks. So if you look at it straight or head on, you can see it sticks up. And when you're doing grinds, depending on the type of surfaces, it tends to catch on different things. Some surfaces like these fake bricks that have the bumps, it really catches on. And then other surfaces, kind of like smooth rails or anything metal, it sometimes does catch on, but it doesn't really catch as much and it just makes more of a scratchy sound. Overall, I think this is a pretty good entry level or budget setup. And down the line could definitely use some upgraded bubble bushings in my opinion. But other than that, for the most part, is really decent and will definitely get the job done. Next up, I'm gonna unbox the finger sneakers that I ordered. They came in this really cool box. And I ended up getting the Demon Slayer Nike Collabs. And these were super wild design. And I like that they came in the box. It's got all the details on here. It's got the size, as well as the barcode and Air Jordan 1. And I'm not 100% sure if these actually match the actual shoe, but they do say off-white on here. So I'm not 100% sure if maybe these go to a different one. But overall, the shoes look pretty cool. And I thought they would be a little bit softer of like more of like a rubber plastic, but they are pretty hard plastic. And right away when I tried to put these on my fingers, I found they were a little hard to get on just because they're a little bit small. And there's also some rough edges on the corners of these. But I did find bending the shoes a little bit made it a little bit easier to get my fingers in there. And then bending the backs of the shoes really helped to get it a little bit wider as well. Overall, I'm really impressed with all the small details on the shoes. Everything looks really good. But with the shoes on just for a few seconds, I realized really fast that they are super uncomfortable to wear. And the front of the tongues have some really sharp edges. And it kind of digs into my finger. And I could even see taking the shoes off really fast. It could potentially even scrape into the front of the finger or cause a cut. So I went ahead and used some nail trimmers and cut down the edges and corners just to make it so there's no rough spots. With the rough spots trimmed off, I went ahead and tried to shape the actual shoes to fit my fingers a little bit better just by really bending the back piece to make them wider. And then I found sticking my finger in it while it was still kind of shaping itself back makes it so it shapes to my finger a little bit better. 
However, these are pretty hard kind of plastic and they do go back to pretty much the shape that they were. So over time it does kind of pinch on my finger, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and try them out. Bending the back of the shoes and then letting them go back to the mold shape kind of reminds me of Nike's self-lacing shoes from Back to the Future movie. With both of the shoes all the way on, it makes it really hard to bend the tips of my fingers. And it kind of makes it harder to do kind of like moves and move around with them on my fingers. But I'm kind of curious to try this out on a board and see if I'm still able to do some tricks. And doing shove and some basic tricks were still pretty hard to do, but I was able to get an ollie in as well as some shove -its. And I tried to get a kickflip, but I was only able to get a varial kickflip and I ended up taking them off because my fingers started to hurt. While the shoes might look pretty cool, they make fingerboarding a lot harder to do. So I'll definitely save these for later and try doing some more tricks with them. But for now, they're just gonna be sitting on my shelf. That about wraps up this unboxing and my initial review of LC boards and the mini sneakers. Thanks so much for watching. If you do have any other questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button as well as subscribe and turn on post notifications for when I post my newest videos. If you'd like to see some more fingerboard setup videos, you can check those out on the channel now. And until next time, peace.